playing as villains in video games isn't the most common thing, but when it's there, it's super awesome. In any video game, you're pretty much always fighting against the villain, never playing as them. So anytime a game does let you play as the villain, it feels extremely awesome. Most recently, I experienced this playing through Spider-Man 2 when the game lets you play as Venom. This sounds awesome, and it was just as awesome as it sounds. Thankfully, one of my favorite franchises, Skylanders, actually took advantage of playing as villains quite a bit. Starting with Trap Team, which his whole gimmick was playing as villains, and moving forward in the series, you were always able to play as villains in some way, shape, or form. In this video, we're going to be going over every way you could play as villains in Skylanders games. It's mainly in Trap Team, Superchargers, and Imaginators because it was not in the first three games at all. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Skylanders Trap Team was definitely the first game that really brought playing as villains into the picture. You could argue that maybe some Skylanders from the first three games had villainous backstories or something of that sort, but they're really not villains, as in you never fight them, they're never the main antagonist of a game, or anything like that, so really Trap Team is where playing as villains became the norm. The whole gimmick of Trap Team was playing as villains, that is what this game is known as. It is the game where you capture and play as villains, which is super awesome, and I think that's part of the reason why a lot of people like this game is because there are 46 different villains that you can play as. That is an insane amount. Most games where it lets you play as a villain, it might be one or two, with a few exceptions out there. With something like Smash Bros, of course, you can play as like the entire roster of villains, but with something like Skylanders, playing as more than just Chaos, I think is kind of mind-blowing. That's the only villain I would expect to be able to play as eventually. Eventually, but this game you could play as 46 different villains which is actually pretty crazy to think about it like that is a ton of villains right there also i will mention this game seems very rushed when it comes to villains because i think originally in development villains were meant to have a full health bar and i'm not sure on a full move set but i think that might have been planned as well where villains were going to be able to use an entire move set they were going to have upgrades for their move set and a health bar so you could play as them as long as you wanted as a full scalander the reason they ended up changing this is just because you could go out and buy a seven dollar tech water life trap and be able to play as six fully playable skylanders with health bars move sets upgrades and of course that is just not making activision that much money and it seems like at that point there's no reason to buy the actual skylanders since that would be such a good deal but eventually they scrapped that and moved over to timers which definitely makes it feel more like what you can actually do with the villains in this game is kind of hindered because you're always on a time limit luckily there's one villain who fixes this and this is chaos chaos does not he does have his timer but he hasn't attacked the recharges it. so you can play as chaos pretty much forever which i do really like that you can do that that's pretty cool Full of movesets kind of just would have been too good to be true as 46 additional ones with, I mean, some of the scoundrels, some of the villains, most of them only have two moves to begin with. So it's kind of crazy. Only the Doom Raiders have three moves. Only the Doom Raiders have a moveset that utilizes all three buttons. So really, the Doom Raiders are definitely the most fleshed out out of all the villains in uh, trap team which makes sense i mean they're the most prominent ones they're the ones that are there throughout the story they have the coolest boss battles they have boss battles that actually utilize a lot of their powers and stuff so it makes sense that they have much more complex move sets but again having full fully like full move sets with a bunch of you know jumping attacks you know hold this to do a new attack stuff like that is just not possible with these guys for the most part and of course having a whole entire like upgrade pads and all that is just not going to happen that would be activision basically throwing away money at that point Something else that I would say is really cool the Trap Team does is you have to capture the villains to play as them. You have to defeat them in battle and then put the trap in the portal and then capture them to be able to actually ever play as them. What this means is that the whole experience is a lot more immersive. You can't just go out and buy a Chaos Trap and then play as him while he's still the main villain in the game. Like That just makes no sense, but it, that's not how it works. You have to actually defeat him and then you can use the trap, put Chaos into the trap, and then you can play as him. I think this is done really well and I really like how this whole system works and really encourage you to go up against every optional boss because then you're unlocking a new sort of villain or character that you can play as. Overall, I think Trap Team did villains pretty perfectly for what it was trying to do. It was trying to make them feel very different from actual Skylanders and not as fully complete and feel like something different while you also have a huge roster and the Doom Raiders also feel very powerful and it feels like you're progressing through the game as you're getting better and better villains. And I think the trapping system was very well done as they talk to you through the portal and have a very cool sort of personality. All of them have unique personalities and then the portal will light up and stuff like that, which is really cool. I think playing as villains in this game is really good and I really liked it and it's a big reason why a lot of people like Trap Team so much. Now moving on to Supercharge, the first thing I will say 
is that the traps from Trap Team no longer let you play as villains. I think this will kind of be too good to be true to be able to play as, put your traps in superchargers and play as all your old villains. Like that seems kind of crazy. With Skylanders, it was really, whenever you move to the next game, they call it, they would kind of just ditch the old gimmicks anyways. So that's kind of what happened. You were not going to be able to use your old, your old villains from Trap Team. The traps do actually do something in superchargers though. They will give you elemental powers of that element. So at least they do something, but of course that is anything too crazy. Now, as far as playing as villains in superchargers goes, it's only in racing mode, which kind of sucks, but that's just how it is with a lot of things in Supercharged. It's limited to racing mode. Post game, it's pretty much only racing. Um, as far as a lot of the side content goes, really only racing. So it kind of makes sense. That the only way you can play as villains is racing mode as well. Now, how you do it is with these villain cups. The villain cups I actually think are a really cool idea. So basically, you put the villain cup on the portal. Not only does it unlock new maps for you to race on, but it will also unlock you to do these sort of boss races, which are really cool. And then once you defeat that boss, then you can add them to your trophy. Then whenever you're racing in any race, you can place that trophy on the portal and you'll get access to all the villains you've unlocked. So if you've unlocked all the water ones, you place your water, your um, golden queen trophy on the portal when you're about to do a water race, then you can select from any of those villains to use, which I think is really freaking cool. I love how this system works. And so I have all my villains saved on these trophies. It works pretty similarly to Trap Team, which I don't think a lot of people realize. You defeat them and then you add them to this piece that you can then place on the portal at any time and use any of the villains that you have really just beat in combat and now they're on that trophy. It works in a pretty similar way to Trap Team, just using racing as the main way. So it's kind of different, but at the same time, I think it's pretty similar overall. Now, when it comes to the actual villains you can play as, there's four per, um per uh, I guess, like movement type for the vehicles. I mean, it's four per C, four per um for sky, and then four for land as well. The land trophy is very expensive, which is worth noting. That's like a fifty to, like fifty dollar trophy to actually get to be able to play as the land villains, which kind of sucks. That's kind of a stinker. But the C and the sky ones are very cheap overall. There's also the chaos trophy. The chaos trophy works completely differently. With this one, you don't have to beat him or anything. You just placed on the portal and play as him. This kind of is kind of cool, but it kind of, you know, goes back to what I was saying about trap team where it's kind of cool that you have to defeat them and capture them to be able to use them with this. That whole concept is just thrown out the window. You place this trophy on the portal instantly. You can play as chaos. It's kind of cool, but at the same time, it kind of takes the sort of like realistic feeling of it actually capturing them and being able to use them It kind of just pulls that all out of the game. So it's kind of dumb, but at the same time, I think it's pretty decent. It still works pretty well because it's chaos. It's kind of just like a special case. Now, what's weird is that you can do these like villain cups where you play as you can play as a villain i'm pretty sure and then you're playing against a bunch of other villains now what's interesting about this is a lot of the villains that you play against that you race against are in the game with full like they have full models and designs but you cannot play as them so they're like um i know c for example or sky sky v when you're doing a sky villain cup you'll come across villains like hoodsicle and bad juju which are really cool, but you can never play as them. They're literally just there to be NPCs that you race against, but you cannot capture them, even though they have these fully modeled in-game, you know, they have their models with their vehicles and their entire moveset, but you can never play as them. You can never use them. I think this really sucks. Like, I really don't get why we couldn't do this. It would only, I mean, add four more to the villain cup. I don't think that's too much to ask for. This would have been really cool. That's really my only complaint with the supercharger system, though. Superchargers was still in the end pretty similar to Trap Team. Really the only difference is that of course it was all based on vehicles and then it was all side content. I mean you could complete the entire game without touching any of these races or any of these villains at all so it's kind of weird but at the same time I feel like they're trying to move on from the whole trapping gimmick but there's a way to still keep it in the game while still implementing it with the new systems and the new gimmick. Um, in case old fans don't want to mess with it. So I think this was actually done pretty well and it's a pretty underrated way to play as villains in Skylanders. It is also worth mentioning, this is the first time since the first game, Spire's Venture, that we got crossover Skylanders. We got Bowser and Donkey Kong. Bowser would definitely count as a villain, and he has an awesome moveset. Donkey Kong, you could you could argue he doesn't count as a villain, but I would honestly count him as a villain originally. Like, he, you know, he throws barrels at Mario, and Mario's the good guy, so I would say he's a villain. So you get to play as these two villains in um, Skylanders. Supercharged, of course, is only on the Wii U version, which kind of sucks, but... Overall, I would say they're still really fun to use and they're really good Skylanders and they're villains. So if you want to play as the main villains of Mario, you can definitely play as them in Skylanders, which is kind of crazy to think about, but honestly, it's pretty cool. Now, finally, looking at Imaginators is probably where playing as villains peaked 
where we actually got figures. They were finally normal Skylanders. We could go out and buy a Chaos, a Wolfgang, a, uh, a Blaster Tron, a Pinata, a Golden Queen, and we could put them on the portal, play as them. They have health bars. They have an entire moveset. They have upgrades. They have upgrade paths. There's so much more you can do with these than how limited it was in Trap Team, which makes them feel way better overall. So I think this game is probably where it peaked, and then having the actual figures that you can display is really, really awesome. I really love that you can actually you know have these figures on your shelf of the villains from skylanders it's really awesome and i really like it um and a lot of the villains that came back were pretty iconic and they were all from trap team you could argue chaos of course he's the main villain he's from sort of earlier games you could also say chompy mage was originally in giants but those are really the only two exceptions to the rule of them all being from trap team they were all in trap team at the very least which most of them were still you know scoundrels trap team original skylanders or original villains so i mean a lot of them are scoundrels or villains such as wolfgang Peñata, Hoodsicle, Golden Queen, Dr. Crankcase, you know, Taekwon Crow, Grave Claw Virage, listed a ton of them, but those are all from Trap Team, and they're all pretty beloved in Trap Team, and I think a lot of the love and a lot of the awesomeness of them does carry over in Imaginators. As far as just putting a Skylander on the portal and being able to play as a villain, this is the only time you're able to do it, which is why I think this is the best system of playing as villains. They're literally just normal Skylanders that don't act any differently. If this is your first Skylanders game, you might not even know that these guys used to be villains. You might just think they have some really cool designs that kind of look a little bit mischievous or villainous, and you wouldn't really think they're villains. You wouldn't really know other than the fact that it doesn't say master next to their name like some of the other senseis do that are not villains. So I think the system was done really well. It is also worth noting that this game had another crossover with Crash Bandicoot and Dr. Neocortex. Crash, of course, is not a villain, but Neocortex is. Neocortex, unfortunately, is not nearly as cool as Bowser or Donkey Kong. His moveset is not nearly as good. He's a lot weaker, but I guess in exchange for that, he does unlock an entire new level where you get to play. I'm sure I think he's in that level. Fake Crash is in that level. It's pretty cool. Um, and of course, you can use him on every console. So if you want to play as Neocortex, no matter what you're playing on, you can play as Neocortex, which I actually find pretty cool and a lot better than the whole Donkey Kong and Bowser situation. Honestly, playing as villains is something that I've always praised Skylanders for. Really, in the end, when you think about it, just not that many video games let you do it. Most of the best video games ever, there's no way for you to play as villains, and it's not something you'd even like ever consider being able to do. But Skylanders really, I think, nailed it in three of their games. I think all three of the games, of course, it wasn't the main focus of Supercharged, which is kind of why it's limited to side content, but in Trap Team, it does exactly what it wants to do. In Imaginators, it's literally perfect as you get these awesome figures of the villains, and they they are fully playable with you know a full fledged out move set which honestly just feels amazing and i love it so much i think skylanders did a really good job of showing really most video games and like the entire video game industry how playing as villains can be super awesome and it isn't too hard to do so i will always praise skylanders for this and i hope you guys agree with me and i will see you guys in the next one hope you guys did enjoy this video um so long everybody bye guys